In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Christe eleison. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you, and look kindly on those who who placed their hope in your mercy, that cleansed from the stain of their sins, they may persevere in holy living and be made full heirs of your promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. King shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting path to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan, as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abram, On your part and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. Our song response The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought his portents, and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord, the Lord be 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 you descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The, the Lord, Lord remembers his, his covenant, covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers the covenant forever. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? 
or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. You do not know Him, but I know Him. And if I should say that I do not know Him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. There are certain aspects of this gospel that I don't know about you, but for me, a little difficult to understand without reading further and researching what was going on and, and getting the full picture of this. In verses just prior to this gospel, the Jews there were, of course, pretty hot and bothered about some of the things Christ had said. And he said to them, tell me where I have sinned. Show me where I have sinned. And of course, they could not, they could not delineate any sins. And he realizes something. They, and in the gospel they say, we're descendants, we're descendants of Abraham. You know, it's a, it's a point of national pride for these Jews to be in the biological lineage of Abraham. It's a point of national self-esteem for these Jews. We know something about it nationalism, misplaced nationalism, um, and just think about that for a little bit. Misplaced nationalism has gotten a number of people in, in trouble over the ages. The Nazis. The, the Catholics in Europe uh, who responded to Luther just, you know, there are countless aspects of this problem. Nationalism is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be. <clears throat> Misplaced, especially. And Christ sees something in these descendants of Abraham. And he sees that Oh, well, there's some doubt there about their being true descendants of Abraham. They don't behave like Abraham. Abraham was open to the messages from God. He was open to God's voice. His heart was simple and open. He was obedient. These, these Jews who claimed to be his descendants... They were not like that at all. They, here was the greatest message, messenger of all time. Christ, God's son here on earth, and their faith was so, well, it didn't exist. They couldn't accept him. They, they didn't have the faith to accept that he was bringing them this message from God. And they were aware at this point in time, Christ had been performing miracles. He had been doing all these wonderful things. They were aware of that. They were aware of all the good things that he had accomplished. They were aware of how he had helped so many. They were aware of how he had proven himself 
And yet they did not want to accept him for who he was. <clears throat> Tradition had it that, that Abraham had a vision of Israel's history, including the arrival of the Messiah. And in the gospel, Christ admits that he was the Messiah and that Abraham had seen his coming. That's what he's talking about when he, when he says that Abraham had rejoiced. And then, of course, they say, you're not even 50 years old. How could you have seen these things transpire? How could you have known Abraham? And, of course, Christ reveals at the end of this gospel, reveals who he is. He reveals his divinity. Now, it's important that you understand why they disbelieve, too, on this point. Uh, the Levites, who had a certain... They were, they were descendants from Levi, uh, and they had a certain religious duties for the Jews. They had political obligations as well, but they were talking to Jesus as if because of his, his status, his, that he was a Levite. Well, when he reveals his divinity, it kind of makes all of that, what does it matter? When he, he reveals that before Abraham, he says, before Abraham came to be, I am. <clears throat> You've heard Father talk about this in recent <clears throat> homilies and sermons about Christ <clears throat> being there from the beginning. When mankind was created, Christ was there. So indeed, he would have known all about Abraham, everything that the visions that Abraham had, everything that had transpired up to that point. But their lack of faith moved them in what direction? They wanted to kill Christ. What is killing and death all about? That's a reflection of Satan. <clears throat> And that's indeed what this lack of faith showed them to be. Those moving towards sin. Remember where Christ was when he was speaking to the Jews in this gospel. That's important. And let me share an ex excerpt, a reflection by, by Tom Verducci when he was speaking about the difficulty of hearing God's voice. Because certainly a, a lot of this gospel is about that. <coughs> about Abraham's openness to God's voice, about the Jews in this gospel being unable to hear God's voice. <coughs> Reducey said that, but the voice of God is there amid the noise, just the same as amid the quiet. He's talking about this rabble that Christ is addressing. The everyday noise that we may be involved in every day. All the things going on in our lives. This rabble that he was talking, Christ was addressing, is like all that noise. It makes it difficult to hear God. It made it difficult for the Jews there, who Christ was addressing, to hear God. Reducey also pointed out that, speaking of God, he calls us always. And it is upon us to listen well. 
Can you think of a better reason why our beloved St. Teresa of Calcutta would advise us to let nothing come between us and Jesus? There's another way of advising us to ever seek the truth and to listen for God's voice. Perhaps even harder than the noise of our environment. Peace be with you. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Amen. Amen. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Amen. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Amen. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts a version for our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Amen. And for Connie Donaldson, may she rest in peace. And for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Amen. Lord Amen. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these sacrificial offerings that they may profit our conversion for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is surely right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a part to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exaltation we acclaim, Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaho, Pleni Sun Cele in Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus Que Veni in Nomine Domini, Hosanna in Excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit of water <coughs> like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, I drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> Agnus Dei. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And in you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits, who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed, Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit that is the Lord. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and his 